I just want to point out that's not his first language, but he sang that song beautifully. Amen? All right. Magsolo ka na naman, ha? Ay, I'm sorry. Sing again. Kailangan English minsan. All right. Well, tonight, as we've already been blessed, I would hope that we will be blessed some more as we take from the Bible some lessons that I hope that all of us would be able to apply inside of our lives. So won't you turn with me into your Bibles to the book of Joshua. I love, this, I love the book of Joshua. It's full of epic adventures. Joshua is in the Old Testament, and we're going specifically to chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6, and we're going to read just a handful of verses, so if you would just follow along with me, okay? Joshua chapter 6, starting in verse 1. If you don't have your Bibles, that's okay, you can follow along on the screen, we'll have it up there, or open up your apps so that you can follow along in the scriptures as well. Joshua chapter 6, verse 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. So the people of Israel, the Israelites, had surrounded this city. And this was at the point inside of the lives of the Israelites. They have already wandered the wilderness. They have already passed on the next generation. And now this is the new generation of those that are obeying God to go into the promised land. And they were promised this land by God to take it. They would own it. It would be theirs. God is going to bless them. Pero po may isang problema. This entry city. This fortified city state that is known as Jericho. And they were known as being impenetrable. They were known as being the one enemy na hindi mo kaya tumbayin. Parang si Pacquiao. And look what it says here, verse 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto, thee, uh, unto thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Think about this. God is telling Joshua, Listen, I gave it already to you. I gave you this, this city. Pero nandyan pa rin. Nandyan pa rin yung towers, nandyan pa rin yung walls, nandyan pa rin yung king, at saka yung mga troops nila. But God said, hey, listen, I've already given this to you. See, it's right there. Just take it. Verse 3, And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. What in the world is God planning? Do we have any soldiers in here? Any military personnel? Yes? Have anybody ever seen a military movie? Yes, okay, uh, at least we got the connection there. All right. Have you ever seen a military tactic that their responsibility, their, res their, their technique and tactics is habang nag planning meeting sila, all right, guys, nandyan lahat ang mga general, lahat ang mga assistants, lahat ang mga dignitaries, all of the key per per personnel are there, and they said, all right, here's the plan. Are you ready? We are not going to send them bombs. We are not going to use machine guns. We are just going to walk around the city. Ang galing ang plano, no? Ano kaya magiging reaction ng ibang mga general diyan? Um, I just want to say, bagong General Joshua, baliw ka. Pangalawang, ipapakulong kita kasi hindi dapat nandito ka. Because that military strategy of just walking around a city is just insane. Yes? Especially kung ito ay fortified. Especially kung itong city 
is one that you cannot defeat. Many have tried, but nobody had ever succeeded. But then God gave Joshua this instruction to go march around that city six days, one time per day. And then on the seventh day, march it around seven times. I don't know about you, but that would seem a little unusual. But Joshua was told to do something unusual. God told Joshua to do something that was crazy. He was told to do something that looked impossible, to take this city without using force, without using flames, without using barricades, or using any of that. It was simply just to obey by God. How many times in buhay natin we are told or instructed by God to do something that would be crazy or impossible? We must take another look at our lives. Look at the lives that we lead and focus on what God has in store for us. Just the way to do that is to take the perspective of Joshua. Kasi si Joshua, hindi niya iniisip yung plano, hindi niya iniisip yung strategy, ang iniisip niya lang, ako ay naglilingkod sa Panginoon, and I will do what He asked me to do. Imagine what that would do, just that concept alone would do to our lives. If we simply said, I, am obey I follow God and I will obey Him regardless if it seems insane. Imagine, in a span of one week, the Israelites who had no cities, the Israelites who had just minor possessions, were able to capture the most fortified city in this entire region. And not just capture it, they were able to utterly destroy it. Wow. Let's begin. Let's begin now, right now, by looking and seeing the realities of our lives. Can we do that right now? Handa pa ba kayo? Unang una, I want us to all see, we are at war. We are at war. Just like Joshua and the Israelites were, they were prepared for the war. Ang, ang makaiba sa war kesa battle, battle is just one singular thing. One singular infraction, one time that they are going to clash. A war is something that is meant to encompass the whole of all the battles. Pansinin po natin, we are at war. We are at war with many things. We are at war with the world. Right? Do you ever feel like you're at war with the world? Not angry with the world, but at war with the world. Why? Because in our spiritual lives, we are, at, uh, we are with an opposition. We are on God's team or on Satan's team. At may malaking gera po. Araw-araw, it plays out before our eyes. Whether we see it or not, it is an invisible battle that is played out in our spiritual lives. Let's turn now to the New Testament. Keep your finger there in Joshua. Babalikan po natin yan. But I want to turn here in James chapter 4. Hebrews and James and John. James chapter 4. Verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you. Where do wars and fightings come from? Do they not come from, from thence? From the lusts that war inside of your members? Where do these wars come from? See, we are against a spirit, we are in a spiritual war, but sometimes we war against our own selves. Yes? Do you ever feel like you're at, at war with your own self? Parang may gera. Tama po ba yung Tagalog po? Gera? Parang may gera po. Naglalaban sa, sa loob ng bawat isa po dito. And it's almost like we have this good and evil side that is pulling and fighting and there's a war happening within each and every one of us. That's why the, the author wrote, I feel like I am doing the things I don't want to do. 
even though I know I should do this other thing, pero hindi ko ginagawa. Parang tayo din. Minsan ginagawa natin yung mga bagay na alam na alam natin na hindi dapat natin gawin. Pero sa kabilang side, alam natin kung ano kailangan natin gawin, tapos hindi natin ginagawa. Yan po ang war that is happening inside of each and every one of us. Do you feel that war? It's alive it's, and it's active. Joshua felt that war that was going on. Sometimes we are at war with other people. Hey, do you have a, the, your uh, arch nemesis sa buhay mo? Sa mga pelikula, uso naman ang arch nemesis. The one that is making contra to you. Sa buhay natin, minsan wala po tayong arch nemesis pero may mga kalaban. May nag-aaway lang. May mga tao that they have a desire to make us fall. And we are at war not with them but that spiritual entity that is acting inside of them. We are at war with oppressive forces just like Joshua. Agreed? The reality is we are at war. Second realization is this. I have battles. Because there's not only war, but there is also battles. And when you're going into a war, you're looking at the big picture. But when you're going into battle, you're thinking about how to fight that enemy right here and right now. We've seen men go uh, into battle, into wars, but when they go into battles, they are worried about their one-on-one -on -one opponent, right? Kahit ano ang... Uh, Kahit anong tactics na ginagamit nila, kung sniper po yan o ginagamit ng espada, they are worried about fighting their opponent. Let me bring you now to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verses 10, 11, and 12. Basahin po natin to. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then it tells us an instruction. Because we're going into a battle, because we're going into that fight, we are stepping not only into the war, but into the very battleground that we have to fight in. <coughs> it says this, Put on the whole armor of God. Have you ever seen a soldier go into battle na wala siyang uniform? Wala po siyang body armor? Eh, yung mga uh, knights back in the day, di ba kailangan meron silang chain mail or breastplate? They need that because they understand as they're going into battle, the opposition is there. And it's ready to take your life. But we, as we are going into the spiritual battles of our life, we must put on the whole armor of God. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. Listen, we're not, we're not fighting against these physical issues here. We are not fighting against that person. We're not fighting against uh, actual military presence. We are fighting not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Joshua realized that he was going into a war to take this promised land. But beyond that, he realized he was going into the Battle of Jericho. And as he looked at the towers and at the strongholds of Jericho, ang nakikita niya, it's not just the enemies of the physical he looked at that saying, Satan is holding that place and it is time for God to take down that high place. Those high places, those spiritual wickedness that's in high places, those, those can be the battles of physical or emotional and spiritual. I can just imagine Joshua going through the emotions of battle. Eh, hindi ko alam, sino po ba dito, napapressure po kayo kapag examinations. Yes? Examinations pa lang, napawisan ka na. 
Oh, wala pa ka sa te- exam table, uh, tumutulo na. And how much more going into battle with this stronghold? And Joshua must have had that moment of anxiety, but he allowed that anxiety to come and then to go because he was prepared with his spiritual armor. He did not allow fear to control him. Mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, when we go into the spiritual battles of our life, do not allow fear to have the victory. Do not allow depression to have the victory, to move us to inaction. Do not allow anxiety to stop us from taking any proper steps that we know we should. We should come prepared with the armor of God when we walk into the battles. I am at war. I have battles. But then this is the beauty of it. I can have victory. I can have victory. Let's go back to the story in the Old Testament. We'll start in verse 11, chapter 6, verse 11. Basahin natin to. We'll see this in action. Kasi yung binasa natin kanina, yun ang utos ng Panginoon. To follow, to obey, and then ito uh, ay actual, ito ang realidad kung ano nangyari talaga po. It says, so the ark of the Lord compassed the city, uh, going about it once, and they came back to camp and lodged at the camp. And Joshua rose the next mo- early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord, and the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually, and they blew with the trumpets, and the armed men went before them. But, but the reward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on, blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned to the camp. So did they six days. Notice. God gave an instruction for the battle and for the war that was playing out and the people of God were being obedient. If we intend to have victory in our lives, we must be obedient. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Let's continue. Verse 15. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they arose early about the dawning of the day and they compassed the city. Compass means they went around the city Uh, After the same manner, seven times only on that day, they encompassed the city seven times. And it came to pass on the seventh time when the priests blew the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. And then we'll skip down to exactly what happened. Verse 20, join me there. Verse 20, so the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted with a great shout and the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city and every man straight before him and they took the city and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass and the ed- with the edge of the sword. My goodness. I'm going to let you know, my friends, God gives us special instruct- instructions for our life. Kasi sigurado po ako, kapag lalabas po tayo ngayon, itong moment ngayon, at harapin natin yung wall dyan sa labas at sinisigawan lang natin yan, ano mangyayari? Makukulong po tayong lahat. Kasi mukhang baliw po tayo. Ang plano ng Panginoon para sa bawat po isa dito is that we should obey His instruction no matter how far-fetched or how unusual it might sound. God wants us to have the victory. Let me take you to the New Testament. If you would, turn with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3, 4, and 5.
For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. <coughs> For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, are not physical, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Listen, we're, we're at war, we have these battles, but we can have victory when we recognize that we are mighty through God. The warfare that we're in is a spiritual one. The battle that we are fighting is a spiritual one. And the responsibility of God, He is the one to pull down these spiritual strongholds. He is the one to uh, pull down these imaginations that lift themselves up over God. Because God is in charge. Pero it is our responsibility to war not after the flesh, but to war after the spiritual things. It is our responsibility to put on the armor of God. It is our responsibility to stand up and live a life that is obedient to God. So I can have victory. I can have victory when I obey God. If I obey what God says, it will be okay. If I obey what God says, it will be okay. Sometimes we get worried when we start obeying God and we start practicing these certain lifestyle choices na galing talaga sa Panginoon, a life of purity, a life that is without reproach, a life that is true and trustworthy. Magkaiba po yung gantong klaseng lifestyle. Hindi po yan uso. But regardless of that, it is God's instruction for all of us to be obedient to Him in those type of lifestyle choices. God wants us to be faithful at church. God does want us to be generous. God has instructed us to tell the world about Him. If we obey what God says, it will be okay. I can obey God. If you want victory, we've got to obey God. Sunod. If I can have the victory, then I can trust God. I can trust Him. Not just obey Him, but trust Him. If Joshua did not truly obey, God would not have provided for him in that way. And if Joshua chose to not trust God fully, who knows what the outcome would have become. If God is asking me to do something that is out of my comfort zone, I can still trust that God is working His plan. Have you ever been asked by God to go out of your comfort zone? Yes? No? It's healthy for us to be going out of our comfort zone. It is good for us to go out of our comfort zone. Baka hindi ka, hindi mo naramdaman na bagay ka dito sa role nito o responsibilidad nito o baka hindi komportable ipaliwanag yung kaligtasan sa co-worker natin okay lang po yan we can be pushed out of our comfort zone so that we can still trust God I don't know about you but if Joshua was a trained military man it was certainly out of his comfort zone to march around the city with trumpets and shouts Hindi po yan bagay sa tamang, tamang military strategies. But because he trusted God and because he obeyed God, the outcome was all right. And I can have victory through God. God will never abandon me if I simply obey and trust. I think that's one of our internal fears, that God would choose to abandon us, that God would leave us stranded, that God would put us in an awkward situation and then papabayaan niya lang. No, hindi po ganyan ang Panginoon natin. 
He cares for us. He loves us. That's why he says, obey me, follow me, trust me. Because I am the way, sabi niya. I am the truth, sabi niya. I am the life. And nobody else can go, come to the Father but by me. Yan ang sinabi ni Jesus. At kung sinasabi niya yan, sure enough, we can trust God that He will give us a victory through Him. Not through us. Notice inside of the story of Joshua, who was glorified? Joshua? No. It was not Joshua. It was God glorified because Joshua didn't do anything. Sumunod lang po siya. Dapat tayo rin. Dapat sumusunod tayo sa Panginoon. Dapat may tiwala po tayo sa Kanya so that He will give us the victory that is promised. In following Christ in our daily life, He will give me the victory that He has promised. Question. If we are truly at war and we truly have battles and we know that God will give the victory, is there anything for us to worry about? No more. No more. We need not be concerned. We need not be worried. May salita na uso po ngayon, anxiety. Narinig niyo po ba yung salita na yan? Anxiety or anxiousness? I do not believe that that's what God wants us to have in our lives. Eh, Pastor Cory, hindi ko mapigilan. Andyan lang yan, yung, yung anxious feelings na. Kaibigan, kapag tayo ay naniliwala na ang Diyos natin ay siya talaga. Kung si Jesus siya talaga ang nabuhay, namatay, at nabu- namuhay na naman, shouldn't we have confidence in our God Our God is the creator of the universe. Our God is the one who set the stars in the sky and told them, stay. Our God was the one who organized the moon and the oceans to be in perfect alignment para may alon. Lupit, no? Our God was the one that perfectly took our planet Earth and tipped it slightly. Para may konting seasons ng mundo. If God does that, sure, certainly we can trust Him with the battles and the wars in our life. My challenge to each and every one of you today, let's be like Joshua. Let us obey, let us trust, and let us have the victory in Jesus Christ. Won't you join me as we pray? Panginoon Diyos, salamat po. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you so much for being the victor and having the victory in, the victory over death and showing us that you have victory in every aspect of our lives. God, we are so grateful. Panginoon, as we have studied some of the story of Joshua and saw this miraculous occasion where the walls of this fortified city just fell down flat. God, we recognize that you did that. And Panginoon, we recognize sa buhay natin may gera po, may mga battles na nangyayari araw-araw. We recognize that there is the spiritual aspect of it that is at play. Sometimes we're at battle with ourselves and other people, but ultimately it is a battle against good and evil. And God, we recognize that you, oh God, are good and you have the victory. And so God, we pray that we would be reminded that we can trust you, that we can obey you, and that you will have the victory, not for our glory, but for yours. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.